Well, hello. Welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I um, am going to try to do the video a little quickly here this week. The reason being is that my, my voice is about to go out. I've been fighting some kind of a cold infection thing. And, and, and our business, you don't get to miss work over something like that. Um, but I uh, just did the Advice and Insights podcast. Still have to record the Dividend Cafe podcast. And I have a, a whole day in front of me and just don't, don't want to keep talking. So bottom line, uh, a lot to say about this week. It's been one of the more uh, volatile weeks of the year. We've already had quite quite a bit of volatility. I'll give you a quick rundown on the week. Uh, market was down 700 points on Monday, ended up closing down 450. So it came back 250 points in the final hour or so of trading. And then it was up well over 300 points on Tuesday after a whole lot of seesaw back and forth throughout the day. Then it was down 700 points in the futures action on Wednesday morning. Oh, got uh, Once the market opened, it got down 600 points. And it closed the day up over 200. So you had an 800-point swing from the low point to the high point, the close. And then now as I'm recording this here on Thursday morning, we're up about 200 points or so in the Dow. So, yeah, you don't usually go down 700 points on the first day of the week and have an up week in the market. And I, and I don't know that we will, but as of right now, we're technically up a little bit on the week, which is really pretty surreal. Um, but this is what's going on. You have an underlying market <coughs> that is uh, heavily uncertain. Um, uncertain about trade and tariff policy and where protectionist rhetoric converts to protectionist policy. You have the broader uncertainty around monetary policy. I think that there need not be such uncertainty. There is a headwind. There's the lack of a tailwind from monetary policy. Monetary policy is not helping anything right now. But I don't think there's uncertainty as to what exactly the central bank is doing. But nevertheless, that it's an additional conversation in the stew of, of market minutia. And then you have the earnings season that's about to start at the end of next week. And a lot of questions as to whether or not uh, much of the good news from corporate tax reform has already been priced into this market, or if in fact we're going to see even more robust results, greater free cash flow realizations, greater capital expenditures and business investment commitments as a result of the corporate tax reform, even greater than had been expected and forecasted. So uh, there is some question marks around that. Our po vantage point right now is very, very specific. Um, we think all this volatility is somewhat justified. I mean, it's probably more elevated than normal and maybe even overdone to the extent that everyone can calm down a little uh, the, that there's some exacerbation from structural and technical elements in the market that we don't have any use for. But for the most part, to the extent that markets react around uncertainty, we get why there's uncertainty. Um, no question, if the president believed a lot of the stuff and was going to do a lot of the stuff he says about trade and tariffs, we think that the market would uh, suffer tremendously. As we saw live up close in person Wednesday, the issue is that the market is teetering between what it believes what, and, and what it hears. And I'll give you an example. The market see, saw that China announced $50 billion of retaliatory tariffs against the U.S., hitting our agriculture industry, soybeans, um, very targeted segments in, in certain states that were meant to hurt the Trump administration. And the futures just collapsed overnight. I was up 3.45 in the morning Eastern time, as I am every day. And I'm telling you that you can watch real time as more details about these China protective tariffs are coming, how the overnight futures market was responding. And then my uh, dear pal, Larry Kudlow, who is now the chair of the National Economic Council for President Trump, in his first public appearance in this role on Wednesday, came out and said, oh, no, speaking for the White House, no, 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 this is our first shot. It's a, a beginning kind of round of negotiations and posturing. We're not looking to have a trade war, blah, blah, blah. And the markets interpreted that, and I would say interpreted it wisely as saying, okay, this, this is more flexing. It isn't reality. It's not all going to come through. 
Um, these tariffs have all been proposed. None of them have been imposed. Now, the risk here is that it does elevate. It does escalate. It does actuate. That's a problem. But in reality, what the markets are trying to find equilibrium around as to what is rhetoric and what is bark and what is bite. Overall, um, I suspect the ending to this will be I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on the timing and I wouldn't bet on what kind of uh, events and movements take place around it. But overall, I would suspect that what we'll see is a final ending to it where the Trump administration gets uh, uh, to save face, gets to claim an optical victory, and um, and probably we don't end up having to see a significant uh, material substantive change around most of these things. Uh, and in the best case scenario, we actually get some improvement in the intellectual property theft. I think that needs to be resolved separately from the tariffs, but that's a separate matter. I think that in the best case, we get some improvement in our dynamic of China and yet don't have to go punish American consumers for it and and delve into healthy trade relationships that, that are, um, are beneficial to the markets. We'll see how it plays out, but I expect volatility to stay elevated for the foreseeable future. So uh, DividendCafe.com this week has a lot of material about alternatives, the role they've played. <coughs> excuse me, in, in benefiting client portfolios in the first quarter, the way we're approaching the bond market, our thoughts on interest rates, Federal Reserve. It's a pretty meaty dividend cafe this week. I hope you'll check that out. I would love to just sit here and talk on and on, but, um, but honestly, I, my, my throat won't hold up, so I apologize. Do go to Advice and Insights podcast. I did a whole first quarter recap there, talked about everything that was doing well, doing poorly, what sectors, how the quarter ended up, and so forth. So Advice and Insights podcast um, has that information. And DividendCafe.com uh, has our written summary for the week and, and a lot of uh, insights we think you'll find useful. Uh, any questions at all, reach out. And uh, we look forward to whatever next week brings. And certainly excited for earnings season. Certainly excited uh, for the Masters Golf Tournament this weekend. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe.